Hey guys and welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So by far we have come to the almost end of the road and there are very few topics left for me to go ahead and complete this tutorial. So uh, the, uh, in of these few topics I will be covering cryptography and database and session hijacking. So what exactly is cryptography? That is the first thing. You may have heard in movies about the encryption and decryption process or in lots of movies or spy movies you may have heard that this file is encrypted we need to crack it and something or the other thing like that. So what exactly is cryptography? In movies they have actually gone way too far ahead and shown a lot of things that's not actually possible in reality. But reality is not that different as well. Cryptography is where security engineering meets mathematics and it's get quite a hell lot of complicated over here. It provides us with the tools that underlie most modern security protocols and it is probably the key enabling technology for protecting distributed systems yet it is surprisingly hard to do right. So as we have seen previously protocols cryptography have always been used to protect the wrong things or they are used to protect them in the wrong way. So we will be seeing them in this tutorial today. So in this tutorial I will be teaching you what is cryptography exactly, its history, what are the basic uh, four parts of cryptography, algorithms, strengths, encryption, decryption keys and the advantages and disadvantages in the end. So to start with cryptography there are always two parts, uh, two main parts, one is the encryption and the other one is the decryption. So um, I will be giving you more examples uh, as we go ahead and start looking in detail at real applications. Unfortunately, uh, the computer security and cryptology communities have drifted uh, like way too far from each other over the last few years. So security people don't always understand that the available crypto tools and crypto people don't understand the real world problems. There are a number of reasons such as different professional backgrounds, computer science versus mathematics different research fund fundings and besides that government have tried to protect or promote computer uh, security research while suppressing cryptography. So it reminds me something of um, uh, a story told by one of my medical friends. He is in medical and uh, he told me that uh, when he was young he worked for a few years in a country where for economic reasons they had shortened their medical degrees and concentrated on producing specialists as quickly as possible. One day a patient who had both kidneys removed and was awaiting a transplant needed his uh, dialysis uh, shunt ridden. The surgeon sent the patient back from the theater on the grounds that there were no urinalysis on the file. It just didn't occur to him that the patient with no kidneys could not produce any urine. So just as a doctor needs to understand physiology as well as surgery, so much a security engineer needs to be familiar with cryptography as well as computer security and much with cryptography as well. So I won't be teaching you cryptology and these two are two different things cryptology and cryptography. So I won't go much into mathematics today and I'll just be explaining the basic institutions and constructions that seem to uh, be the most cause of confusion. If you have to use cryptography in anything reassembling a novel way then I would strongly recommend that you read a lot more about it. Computer security people often ask for the non-mathematical definitions of a cryptographic terms. The basic terminology is that cryptography refers to science, an art of deciphering or designing ciphers, cryptanalysis to science and art of breaking them. While cryptology often shortened uh, to just crypto is the study of both that is cryptanalysis to science and designing ciphers. So the input to an encryption process is commonly called as the plain text, the output is called as the cipher text. And thereafter, things will get more complicated as I continue with this tutorial. There are n number of cryptographic primitives, basic building blocks such as block ciphers, stream ciphers or hash functions. Block ciphers may either have one key for both encryption and decryption, in which case they are called as the shared key. And it can be again a secret key or symmetric or asymmetric or they can have separate keys for encryption and decryption in which case they are called as the public key or asymmetric key and thereafter we will have a digital signature uh, scheme uh, which is a special type of asymmetric 
crypto primitive and in the rest of this tutorial I'll give you some fine historical examples to illustrate the basic concepts of cryptography. Then I'll try to fine tune definitions by introducing random oracle model uh, which uh, many cryptologists use. Finally I'll show you some of the more uh, important cryptographic algorithm uh, how they actually work and how they can be used to protect data. So um, if you remember this then you might remember some of the old movies such as Da Vinci uh, Demons I believe or you can remember something like the English movie such a famous as Angels and Demons. So you might be wondering what this is. In the previous days, um, mostly famous by Leonardo da Vinci, who actually went ahead and created, uh, I can say, the first ciphertext. He was the first one to go ahead and pass uh, different messages secretly during the Florence Wars and a lot of other stuff. So you might be wondering that how this exactly would come in help. So, um, in the previous days, there was not much thing like um, if you go uh, some password or something. He used to go ahead and create different types of cipher and there were different type of liquids uh, inside um, a specific, let's say, as you can see, this is printer, but there is another thing in which the paper was written something like this and you will need to go ahead and decipher all the keys in a proper way. If you are not able to do that, then there would be a liquid over here which would directly go ahead and surpass to the actual paper in which uh, the note was written and uh, the note would straight away burn or there won't be anything left of it inside. It can be acid or it can be any phosphoric uh, acid or something like that. So uh, it will straight away go ahead and get burned and you won't even know what was the message exactly. So you need to know the password else uh, the message would completely destroy itself and you cannot even go ahead and force open it from either end because again this protected. So any kind of tampering with that and it will still straight away go ahead and again throw away the liquid on the paper in which the message was written. Even the paper was a specific type of paper in which uh, you cannot actually go ahead and write uh, any random thing. So that's how ciphering was done in the previous days. So the most ancient and the basic problem of cryptography is secure communication over an insecure channel. Let's say for example party A wants to send let's say party A wants to send a secret message to party B over a communication line which may be tapped by an, let's say party C or an adversary. The traditional solution to this problem is called private key encryption. In private key encryption A and B both hold a meeting before the remote transition takes place and agree on a pair of L encryption and decryption algorithms that's let's say for example in our case let it be E and D. E is encryption, D is a decryption. And an additional piece of information let's say S in our case will be kept as secret. So we shall refer S as the secret key. So um, to be more precise A wants to send something to the party B without it ha to be tapped by the adversary C. So it goes ahead and use the encryption E and the decryption key D and it uses the secret uh, common key that known as S. So the adversary which is C may know that the encryption and the decryption algorithms E and D which are being used but it does not know S is a secret key. So after the initial meeting when A wants to send B a clear text or a plain text message over the secure, insecure communication line A will, encrypt, uh, a will en encrypt a specific uh, clear text by computing the cipher let's say for example C equals to E into SM and it will send it to B and upon receipt uh, B uh, will decrypt it C by computing again message equals to D S of C. So I'll just go ahead and write it down for you so that it will be easier for you to understand. So A will go ahead and uh, compute the ciphertext by typing C not exactly C I'll just go ahead and let's say let's say for example C, uh, M is our message and E is, is our encryption key and S is our secret. So let's uh, I will take X as the ciphertext so I'll text X equals to E of S comma M. So this will be the ciphertext that he will be sending and the decryption key that B would be receiving would be something like M equals to D of S comma X. So uh, the line tapper or the adversary who does not know X should not be able to compute the M from X. If he's able to then this would uh, be of no use. It will be total waste. So this is how it works exactly in reality. But uh, in the previous time the Arabs they generalized this idea to the mono alphabetic substitution 
in which a keyword is used to permute the cipher alphabet. So I will write the plain text in lowercase letters and the cipher text in uppercase. So I'll, uh, and it will be something like um, I'm just going to show you. I have one with me right now, so I'll just let me check if I have used that. Perfect. I'll show that later on. So the cipher text would be something like C Y A N space R W S G K R space A N space A H and R H T F A N Y M S O Y R M O Y S H S M S E A C N C M A K O. Okay. So when you go to look at this specific uh, thing. You will uh, not even recognize what it is exactly, but breaking ciphers of this kind is straightforward pencil and paper puzzle, which you may have done in primary school. The trick is that some letters and combination of letters are much common uh, than others. And in English, most common letters are E, T, A, I, O, N, S, H, R, D, L, U in that order. So artificial intelligent researchers have shown that. Interest in writing programs to solve monoalphabetic substitutions using letter and digraph that's letter pair frequencies alone they typically succeed with about 600 letters of ciphertext. While smart strategies such as guessing probable words can cut this to from 600 to 150 letters, and a human cryptanalyst will usually require much less, like approximately around 50 to 75 letters, and it will probably go ahead and actually crack this word. So if I go ahead and try to crack this, so it will be something like it will be I. So I will replace everything with I and or rather than that I'll just go ahead and show you an example. You can go ahead and try to crack it. This will be this. So uh, you can go ahead and replace the C by A and that we had and replace every C with T, Y with H, uh, A with I and N with S. And you can straight away go ahead and try to crack this key. So this is an example as to how it was uh, during previous days. So yeah, that would be it for this tutorial and that's how it works. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'll be teaching you about the two different ways of making a cipher and how uh, we could go, how in the previous days they used to go ahead and communicate through this type of plain text.